With regards to the increase in domestic violence that we've seen, particularly since COVID restrictions have been imposed, we've seen a significant increase in what's described as coercive control. So I suppose generally the traditional domestic violence images would be of shouting and screaming and physical assaults and guards being called um, and general hysteria. Coercive control is a very sneaky, subtle, bullying type of control that takes over silently, sometimes within a house where the outs to the outside, it appears that there's absolutely no problem. Examples of coercive control would be would be name calling, would be putting down somebody all of the time. Now, obviously people are gonna have moments where they don't get on and there's going to be things said. Coercive control is not that. Coercive control is exactly as I said, it's control by one person of the other through subtle bullying, constant put downs all the time. How do you prove it? Because there's no bruise, there's no broken bones. But what you do is you reach out because now coercive control is accepted by the courts. There is legislation providing for domestic violence protection for emotional and psychological abuse. And in fact, it's now recognised as a criminal offence in this country. So as a victim of domestic violence, the first thing that you need to do is to reach out, be it to your doctor, your friend, your mother, your sister. Again, COVID has stopped people having that option to go and meet people and discuss it. So when you go to court, it's a very private, it's a very dignified process. You are on your own in the courtroom, just with the judge and the registrar. It's not a public court. There's no intimidation. There's no room for fear in the court. The reason that you're there is because you've lived with that fear. So you go and you make your application and you get the options available to you from the court to give you the protection that you clearly need. So coercive control is um, bullying, um, emotional, psychological control over day-to-day -day activities. It's, we've had examples of people measuring petrol tanks in refusing to allow people's freedoms without an actual physical assault. It's complete emotional control is what's going on. So much so that sometimes the victim themselves doesn't even realise it until it's got to the point where the coercive control has escalated now into physical control because such is the position that the abuser is now in.